Okay, a few tips as you're getting ready for your next showing writing exercise. And basically, I'm going to be taking you to some sections of CEA for some models and pointing out a couple of, of details. Um, what you might think about doing is on 58 here, I do an analysis of the, the showing exercise that we did on day one. And again, I, I sent you a... I sent you a link earlier about that, but you might read through this section because I talk about some of the components of showing writing, um, the parts of speech, etc. So I think that might prove helpful as just a reminder. Okay, then uh, we're going to take a look at the next uh, section here. We're on page 60 and 61, okay? And I'd like to, we didn't go over, over these in class, so let me talk a little bit about, these are opening statements in this section, and you'll notice that they are very precise and specific. The camera lens is very narrow. Uh, five threads poke out the bottom left edge of the cap where the stitching has broken loose. And probably you might not even need that, so if we're going to revise further, um, because this image of five threads poke out of the bottom left edge of the cap is beginning to show us um, that the stitching is broken loose. But again, you've got several words here that are helping, uh, helping us to see. Then again, his brown greasy hair swats. Nice verb there. Um, active. Uh, probably, if I were going to revise this, I might just focus on greasy is more interesting than brown, but, but this is still good. His scarred face with each galloping stride. Gripping his west in his left hand, he plummets through a pants pocket with his right hand in futile search of an additional clip he knows that does not exist. And again, what we have, we have a lot of concrete images Again, I probably, if you would go back to revise this, maybe elaborate a little bit further there. But uh, as an example of the diction that allows us to see. So even the beginning of this sentence, the participial phrase, it's not just gripping his weapon or gripping his gun. Now we have gripping his Smith and Wesson. So we have, if, if you notice, we've talked about factoring language. So we go from the word weapon, that gets factored into gun, and finally he factors it into a Smith and Wesson. So this movement, I've talked about this continuum of going from a, a general word to a specific, That's you always want to see if you can accomplish that. Okay, so let's look a little further here. I'm going to erase some of that. Tom slides his fingers underneath the corners of the rectangular envelope. Again, very narrow camera lens. We're starting very specifically. Um, his clenched fist shoots forward like a bullet out of a barrel as it digs its way into the boy's soft flesh just below his right eye. Leaving so, uh, red trail of warm blood. So very strong beginnings. This is the type of uh, specific concrete movement we're, we're after. Okay, then remember on this next page, what I was interested in showing you during class, and this is the idea of extending elaboration, so the previous examples were selecting concrete imagery, well, and concrete diction. Uh, here, we really take a single image, and again, remember in class, uh, at this point, we introduce the pencil, okay? And notice each sentence still um, trace, we could trace that where the focus is still the pencil in each sentence here. But what I want you to notice is that each manifestation, each sentence has and explores a different aspect of the pencil. So we've got a snap. 
um, and an image of it's right beneath his bare foot. Then we have a nice modifier here that also expands. We don't say repeat pencil again, but the splintery wood. And now we have this image of digging, the wood digging inside the arch. So that's different. Um, so we've got sentence number one there, sentence number two. Now we're after sentence number three. We're not leaving this narrow lens. As he slowly lifts his left foot, one half. So this is going to break, sticks to the foot. So that's also a different manifestation. And then sentence four, he shakes his leg, and the, and the image here is that the pencil bounces off the wall. So we've stayed focused simply on the pencil. This is the nature of the exercise, that if you, if you introduce an image, in this case, this is the pencil, right? This is primary image one. You're going to put a period. Then you still want to do, stay with image one and have a version of it, version A. Okay, put a period. Image one still, version B. Okay, and I talked about that in a, a previous video as well. Okay, finally, on let me show you what page we're on. These are where some more samples are on page uh, 63 here. Okay, and two, two examples I think have some nice concrete detail of what we've been talking about. Um, and one is from Coach Furton. And let me just point out a, a few things. The hazel eye squints. We have a nice strong verb. And again, the lens is very narrow as we enter this, this sentence. At the spiraling doodles plastered on the lower left corner. So, clearly, he's writing... And he's not just doodling, but we have some modification to help us see even further. They're in sort of something like this is happening. Um, and then we have a nice past participial phrase here, littered with circular pencil craters that rip the paper into four congruent triangles. So again, some nice imagery here. He twirls uh, his hexagonal prism shaped mechanical pencil. Maybe a few too many adjectives before that, but, but again, fine. So we're still with this pencil stuffed with 0.5 lead. His pudgy fingers trek upwards as they creep stealthily to the crumbling pencil eraser. This is a very narrow, narrow lens here, so his fingers are just simply moving up to the, the eraser, and he's taking time to to select diction that allows us to see this image. So we've got pudgy fingers, some variation. The plump thumb slugs the eraser, lounging on the pencil's apex. Okay, again, very narrow lens, driving the pink rubber into the metallic green aluminum divider, separating the eraser from the graphite brush. And then it just, just continues. Lots of nice... Uh, detail. If we move down here, so he's taking a test. The slash through letter A in the Comic Sans typeface, <clears throat> a streak of metallic gray dust trails the slash. Very nice image. Uh, just as the plane's exhaust belches a white column of smoke. The right to the left slash commences with a faint hook looping around and gradually fading out on the left edge of the exam sheet. So lots of concrete detail there. Another example to take a look at is, is Christian Bouchel at the end of the page. And I think he has a junior brother. Um, and he's doing some nice work. Uh, we open, a thorn brush protrudes through the minuscule gaps and the birchwood planks of a fence. Very nice, again. So, this is a phrase that could be a lot more general vague. Um, the idea here is that the vegetation is overrunning everything, right? Um, but we've got something very concrete. Two sword-like thorns 
Wedge underneath the white veneer of the paint, peeling off the exterior in thin shapes, dispersing them between the slender blades of the Augustine grass. Again, very, very, very nice precision there. Concrete words, most of these words are thorns, wedge, strong verbs, white veneer, paint, um, ex this thin sheets. So a lot of these, the majority of the words are allowing us to see an image. We're still with this vine, um, this sort of bush area. A long green vine sprawls out and snaring, nice uh, participle choice there, into the steel latch holding the fence closed. So again, what we have here is an image of something that's decaying, that's old, but we have so many concrete details, the diction is precise in almost all factor. So this is the type of narrow lens that we're pushing forward and we're uh, moving toward. And what might be a helpful exercise for you is to have these pages open. Read both uh, the Furton piece and the uh, Bouchel piece and then go back to your own writing. I'm going to suggest this throughout the year to, to have open some pages of specific examples and try to imitate them. Okay, see you Tuesday.